Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Shah Weekly and in this video I'll be giving you a very small introduction to Swift Data. Now Swift Data is a framework that Apple just released at WWDC 2023 and it is the replacement for core data. So it will allow you to use a much nicer API to persist information in the database. Now, a couple of different things to note over here. First of all, I am using Xcode 15 Beta. Now, Xcode 15 Beta is a little bit rough. As you'll see, it takes a lot of time to run the simulator. When you type in the text box, it has all throwing all sorts of weird errors, but you need Xcode version number 15 to run this. The target is also set to be iOS 17. That's the important part. Let me go ahead and highlight that for you. Uh, where does it go? Now I am lost. Uh, here we go. iOS 17. Okay, so we are using iOS 17. And I'm all already creating like a very basic interface. You can see we have a title. We don't even need it's completed, by the way, but I'm just adding a toggle. Um, one of the things that I noted when I was using Xcode Previews is that it will save the data, but when you run your application again or you refresh your Xcode Preview, it will be it will be gone. Uh, so I'm just going to try to run it on the real simulator. So let's see what happens. So the first thing I need to do is to import Swift Data. So that's a new framework that Apple added. Now the user is going to be adding information or entering information in the title text field right there. And they can also toggle the switch or the toggle on and off. The button over here doesn't really do much. Uh, so this is where we will be saving the information. But when we're saving the information, we need to create the model that what information, what data, what structure entity we want to save. So with Swift data, we can go ahead and create a class Let's say a to-do item. And we can mark this class with the model macro. So this is a macro, which is a new feature of Swift language. And what macro is going to do is that it's going to give us like a more superpowers to to-do item. I'll create a new video for the macro. It's a different topic. But what we are saying over here is that this macro is decorated on to-do item. So the to-do item is now available for Swift data to be used. Now, currently, we don't really have anything in there, meaning we don't really have any properties in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some properties over here. There we go. There are two properties, title and completed, and the initializer. The other thing that we want to do is we want to load the model context. So just like the manage object context, but this time, since we're using Swift data, we'll be using the model context. We'll use a private var context, okay? Next, we can simply start using our to-do item class that we created. So I can go over here and create a to-do item, which will be a to-do item. I can pass in the title, which will coming from the text box, which is title, and is completed. Once I have the to-do item, I can go ahead and add it to the context. And this can be done by simply saying insert and then the model. Now, when you add something to the context or when you insert something to the context, this means that the context is now tracking that particular entity or the model that you just inserted, okay? But it shouldn't be saved to the database yet. If we want to save something to the database, we have to call the save function. And this function can blow up, so we have to make sure that we are catching the error. So if you want to catch the error, which is a good idea, then you should wrap it with try catch. All right, error.localized description. So this is going to allow us to save the information. And that's all the code we need. We didn't really need to create a data model file. We didn't really need to set up the core data stack or anything. We're not using core data, we're using Swift data. So it's a little bit more simpler. It kind of reminds me of Realm or even Fluent when you're working with Vapor applications. 
The next task is to display all the items and also delete the items, okay? So if I run this right now, which I'm not, but if I run it right now, you will simply see a screen with the text field and the toggle, but, and you can save it, but what good is save when you can't even see it? So let's go ahead and create a different view that will be responsible for showing you all the task items. So let me go ahead and create another view. I'm just gonna call it task list view, and you can move the view into a separate file. There we go. And this view will be responsible for displaying you a list of task items, okay? So this means that you are going to be passing an array of task items to it. So the parent, the content view, is going to be passing items to the task list view. But now the question is, well, the parent view, the content view, how is it going to be fetching those items? So if you remember when you were using core data with Swift UI, we were using the fetch request property wrapper. But now we can use something called a query. So query property wrapper allows you to perform, well, queries. So we can over here provide the sort order and all of those different things. So if I want to sort something, I can go ahead and say to do item dot title. This means that when we fetch the stuff, it will always be sorted. Forward order will be forward, uh, meaning not ascending or you know in that particular order like A B C D. Animation spring when it loads, it will be have a spring animation, and then we will just go ahead and create and we'll call it all to do items. That will be the variable name and it will be an array of to-do item. And now wherever we want to display our task list, task list view, we can simply pass in all to-do items. And the good thing is that whenever you add a new task or a to-do item, this query will know and it will get executed. It will fetch the new item or items, all the items, and then it's gonna pass it to the task list view. Now, if we go back to the task list view, task list view is not really doing much. So let's go ahead and update this part. There we go. You can see that inside the task list view, we are using a list. We are going through it using for each. We're calling on delete also. So we will also allow the user to delete a particular task item but we don't really have a delete function. So let's go ahead and add that function. Deleting is also pretty straightforward. We will go through all the index set stuff. We will try to get the item. We will go ahead and delete it or mark for deletion in the context, which we don't have. So the first thing we will also need to do is to get access to the context. We can say context.delete the to-do item. And that's just going to mark it for deletion. So we still have to call context.save. So that's gonna persist the changes, okay? Let's go ahead and run this. Oops, if we run this, we get an error. Set a model context in the view environment to use the query. Basically, it's saying that we still have to set the model context. The model context, if we don't set it, then these things, the environment variables, is not gonna work. Usually, it's a good idea to set this at the root level. So the root level is the to-do app content view. And we can go ahead and set the model context over here. We can set the model context and pass in the different types, which can include our type, which is task item or to-do item dot self. Now let's go ahead and run it again. Now keeping in mind that this is beta version of Xcode 15, so whenever I tap on the text box, you can already see 
a bunch of errors or warnings or some sort of a messages being displayed. When I try to type over here, it's very slow, but I can type a little bit more along. I can say completed, save, and you can see that it is added. Let's go ahead and add another item. You can see that I'm deleting, but it's very, very slow. It's very hard for me to delete anything, and it's kind of stuck now, to be really honest. The simulator is kind of stuck. So you will face these kind of issues when you're using uh, the beta version of Xcode, you know, Xcode 15. So let's type in something over here. I'm going to say something over here is completed, and there we go. Now, I'm a little bit hesitant of deleting it. Okay, it can be deleted, but I have to be very careful. I have to be very slow, and then I can add more. Okay, let's go ahead and delete mow the lawn. That's deleted. That's also deleted. And just to check that these things are deleted, I'm going to go ahead and run it again so that we won't be able to see all of those things, only three, right? So this was a very small, very basic, kind of like a hello world kind of a video for Surf Data. I will be working on a brand new course on Surf Data, so stay tuned for that. I'm still learning about this. This is a brand new thing, but I'm definitely excited about it, and I think you're going to love it. Thank you so much. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see I have a lot of different courses including building augmented reality apps and reality kit. This is going to be really helpful for you if you want to build for the Apple new headset, the Vision Pro headset, definitely going to be helpful over here. And then I have a lot of different courses, MVVM design pattern, MV design pattern, and so on. So definitely check out the link in the description. Thank you so much.